Hello, everyone. This is the prosthodontics on Friday program to look into and tackle the dental prosthodontic treatment steps in an easy way and resolve their side effects. Back to the basic, complete dentures. Today, we are going to talk about a problem of sleeping dentures with the topic of establishing CR and orientation relation. Professor No kang of Gyeonghae University Dental School. Hello. It was already two years ago. You talked about multiple implant restoration, abutment selection, and prosthetic selection and you came back today. Thank you very much for that. Before we start, please uh, summarize what you're going to talk about today. Today, I'm going to talk about how to obtain occlusion, which is one of the most challenging problems when we talk about complete dentures for patients. When we deal with uh, senior patients, uh, sometimes uh, they have very unstable occlusion. So I'm going to talk about how to approach them clinically in such cases and the methods that I have used. For the complete denture treatment process, I believe establishing centric relation is very important, as important as taking impressions. Listening to your explanation, I get more excited about your lecture. Thank you. If you're watching our dental site, we can communicate it through the chat. You can leave your questions and answers will be provided in real time and a Starbucks coffee coupon will be sent to you. Among the questions, the best one will be selected and you will get a views and music tiger dental set. You can learn complete dentures and if you're lucky, you will receive a lot of presents. Your active participation would be appreciated and let's get started with the prosthodontics on Friday. Hello, it is my honor to be able to come back to Prosthodontics on Friday with uh, the respectful Professor Jo in -ho, and I would like to thank the doctors who are joining us in real time. We are going to talk about CR and orientation relation as was introduced before, how to obtain stable occlusion for our patients and how to find the stable position when the occlusion is not stable. Many papers talk about factors influencing patients' satisfaction with new complete dentures like this paper. Most importantly, finding a stable condylar position and establishing occlusal position. Clinically, we see often patients use the dentures pretty well as long as the chewing position is right even though the form is not ideal. It is reported that a stable denture position is important to appropriately obtain occlusion. When we obtain occlusion for a few crown bridge restorations, clinically it is not very hard, but these days we encounter very senior patients. I believe in the old Boucher's textbook on complete dentures. Patients were not that old, but recently we see more and more senior patients and we need to be prepared to treat such senior patients. Some time ago, the Contessence magazine conducted a survey, which is indicated here. There are many clinical steps in complete dentures and they are all challenging. Based on the survey, obtaining occlusion is considered the most challenging part, even though it is considered the most critical part. If you think about the reason why obtaining occlusion is considered very hard, it is not easy to handle wax frame and have patients bite on it. When a patient's temporomandible joint is not stable, the result is not consistent. That makes it very difficult. This is an answer to why obtaining occlusion is difficult. 
it says we always use the wax frame and use the same approach and sequence to obtain occlusion. Sometimes it works very well with very stable outcome and no pain. However, sometimes the patients would experience a slight receding jaw clinically while using the denture. Even though we try to find the comfortable occlusion, the result is not always consistent, leading to this kind of survey result. Before we talk about how to obtain occlusion, first we need to understand the reasons why it's not easy to obtain occlusion in senior patients and their TMJ status. Today, we see a lot of patients with severely resorbed alveolar bone, and edentulous patients have very much weakened the masculine force and have a hard time adjusting to the dentures comfortably. According to a recent temporomandibular joint study conducted in Japan using cadavers, senior people do not have normal TMJ form with condylar discs. 60 to 70 percent of senior people showed TMJ diseases and worn down condyle and wider joints. Recently, in many cases, you see transitioning to edentulism involves unstable TMJ and also with bad habits, which make it very difficult for us to treat. If we treat a patient on the left with stable TMJ, complete denture treatment can go smoothly. But on the right hand side, you see very severely resorbed alveolar bone and unstable TMJ, making the situation very hard for us to treat. This is the ACP classification, extent of alveolar rich resorption. Alveolar rich resorption is very important, but uh, clinically, I find unstable factors of TMJ pose a lot of difficulties. The treatment was successful in this patient. Impressions were taken, recording base was fabricated, which can have some errors. In this type of patients, the base should be stable. In the mouth, if not, it will have some errors in the bite obtained. Today we have many such patients and stabilizing the base is not easy and that makes our work difficult. If alveolar ridge is severely resorbed, the space should be filled to obtain the position. The large interarch space poses problems as errors can be made. Some are using this technique to stabilize the recording base. The recording base material resin is subject to shrinkage, creating errors in the mouth. So the base is made with wax and the base alone is cured first and the wax frame is mounted over it. This is done by many dentists. I saw many dentists doing this when I visited the United States. However, it has a problem of double curing I don't use this technique often, but when the base is stable with this technique, the adjustment you have to make in the final position is considerably reduced, which is an advantage. When we obtain a bite from an edentulous patient, what is very important is, as I said before, the form of glenoid fossa. The more aged the patient is, the more wearing is observed in the joints and the joint itself is flattened in the shape. You will better understand if you look at this picture. You will understand the difficulty of obtaining the centric relation in senior patients compared to those with normal TMJ. Sometimes we obtain CR usually with bimanual manipulation or chin point manipulation by applying force on the chin and looking at the condylar discs and its relation. If you look at the photos on the right hand side, the condyle has become very small and the joint is widened. If we apply force in this condition, the fossa would be excessively pushed distally with the extended ligament 
if we apply upward force, it will be pushed upward and wrong position can be obtained. Critically obtaining CR. So we need to be careful in obtaining a stable condyle position. If you look at old books on complete dentures, by manual manipulation, he is used to take CR in patients with teeth. Or chin point manipulation is used to apply force on the chin. Feeling the rotation, closing up the mouth is induced. For patients with normal TMJ, there will be no problem in terms of errors as the condyle is pushed backward just slightly. Patient cases will be introduced later. The patients have a lot of gap in TMJ and if we apply force using chin point manipulation, the condyle will be pushed backward too much and you need to understand this point. Looking at the patients who want complete dentures now, if you observe the old dentures that they used to use, you can learn a lot of things. Some had discomfort in chewing. There were other problems, so they want new dentures. If you observe old dentures, it can be very helpful. Some use the old denture for chewing pretty well and it is stable, but some experience some discomfort. So when you fabricate a new denture, you just don't go ahead, but uh, you need to do deprogramming, which I will explain later. If you lead the patient to comfortably bite, you will realize there is a discrepancy from the comfortable biting and the bite in the old denture. If you proceed to the final denture in this situation later, bite taking can be a little bit difficult and it is important to make sure the patient can chew pretty well with the bite. So I try to modify a little bit to the denture. Usually if you make the mandible a little bit flat like this, the mandible will find a stable position and if you modify a little bit of the denture, bite taking can be made easy for the final denture and the ability of occlusal position can be checked so it has many advantages. Unlike young patients, in many patients we find it is difficult to determine stability just based on the joint status. I treated this patient in the past with my intern. On one side, the condyle was dislocated. We can induce the patient to have proper jaw a little bit, but uh, with this denture, it is very hard for them to chew. As the patients became edentulous, over time, various factors worked to make the patient to have this condition. If we fabricate a denture in this condition, it can be used, but if we find more stable muscle for the jaw, the TMJ will be changed. So based on that position, a denture would be fabricated. I will show you a case later. I use this technique a lot even for patients with a dentition to find a stable condyle position. If you try this, you will find it very effective. I believe you learned in the past that deprogramming can make a condyle very comfortable and inducing it very easy, but if you really do it, you will feel the big difference. Biting on a cotton rolls helps and on the right hand side you see the product that I bought. If you chew on it, it helps to deprogram the muscles. Before we obtain the CR, opening and closing the mouth to the maximum, the exercise would prove to be very helpful for the deprogramming. After five minutes of using it, you will feel the effect. According to articles, for patients who are hard to be induced, a longer exercise would become more effective. I think you use wax rims to obtain occlusion. 
There are many ways to use the wax frames and it is important for me uh, to point out that they should not be touching in the interior region. I find it difficult to clinically adjust the wax frame consistently so I get the vertical dimension in the interior region and remove a little bit of wax from the posterior mandible and paraffin or aloe wax would be put over it so they are hardly in touch in the anterior region. Some patients find it hard to control the biting force and some doctors um, may have difficulty in the technique and if the anterior region is in touch occlusion will be distorted and later you will find the posterior region is lower so you need to pay attention to this it is better to have a thin wax frame fitting the actual tooth size and the wax frame on the left hand side is rather thick if the anterior region comes in contact first when we take bites if the anterior region come in contact first the posterior region will be lifted slightly and the space in the posterior region would be narrower than actual space making the teeth lower after delivering a denture if posterior region is low in many cases that's because anterior region is in touch when wax frame is obtained if we obtain occlusion from wax frame you would adjust the wax frame to make it uniform on the chair side and take bites with silicone the technique can easily result in occlusal errors the wax frames may look evenly in contact in occlusion however they may not be all in contact due to deformed base caused by the distortion in mucosa so even contact of wax frame is hard to achieve so it is important to obtain occlusion when wax frames are not actually in contact if you use silicone it is hard to maintain the hardening time so personally i prefer to use wax for occlusal position obtainment if you use wax frame to obtain occlusion it is very important to check one more time during wax denture or the final denture remounting the left hand movement is very important with the second joint of the left hand the upper denture is fixed and then the buckle side of the mandible is fixed with a thumb and an index finger to push the upper and lower dentures at the same time with the mucosa while maintaining it for the jaw not chin point manipulation as for the terminal hinge position the patient is made to close the mouth by this slight rotation in that position the bites are taken upon closing the mouth the patient is instructed to open the mouth the wax is cooled in cold water it is checked if it is consistent with the tapping if it is usually the position is right when a patient cannot control the amount of mouth opening we can use a right hand like this the wax is put in and the right hand works like a stop so that the posterior region would not be in contact for a complete denture it is not easy to use an anterior cheek so with the thumb in position if the mouth is closed uh, the wax is used to take the bite when teeth are not in contact and you can check with the mouth open let me explain the postures for occlusal position taking Professor Kaoru Koite in Japan conducts a lot of studies on the postures. This is his result. We take occlusal position in sitting, but in supine position, the condyle would be pushed by gravity and the ligament would be extended, resulting in about one millimeter displacement. As we are standing in obtaining occlusion, it is not easy to manipulate the wax rim. 
At the bottom is the posture to obtain stable position of Konda, which is similar to the sitting position. This posture is known to prevent the posterior displacement of condyle to a certain degree. I believe some of you have not used this gothic arch tracing method. It is not the process uh, for the surgeon to move hands, but it is used by the patient. If you try it once, you will realize it is not difficult to follow and it has the advantage of checking with the naked eye. You can understand the situation easily by just looking at it. I will explain it later and the patient would be able to find a stable point, but whether the point is stable or it can become unstable later it can be checked in advance, which is an advantage. Through the distance from the stable point to the point we lightly guide and the point when a patient begins movement. However, this gothic arch tracing is not indicated for all cases. A stable base is required for a flabby gum. The base can be changed resulting in sinking down of posterior region, so this is contraindicated for that. For class 2 or 3, if you cannot find the point that can stabilize the maxilla at the same time interfering with occlusal taking. Using the pin itself is not important. It is important to look at the indications for the denture pin to stabilize the base. As I said before, the tracing is to check visually whether the denture tapped by the patient rapidly is uh, stable repeatedly. So the gothic arch tracing is to observe the sections of mandible movement in three-dimensional pulsed diagram to obtain mandible position by looking at the movement starting point in, in its relation with patient's repeated chewing. The position to get occlusion is not the apex. As I said before, edentulous patients have a relaxed joint ligament and they can be pushed backward. So we need to find the position where repeated chewing can be made to obtain occlusion. In young patients, apex is the position where patients chew but it is not the case for senior patients. Due to the relaxed ligament, the patients chew a little bit anterior to the apex. There are factors that make TMJ very unstable, including the bad habits with the existing denture and abnormal muscle adaptation. Based on my clinical experience, if the deviation is more than 2 mm, the position will later be changed. That occurs 10 to 20% of the cases. This is such a patient. The starting point of the chewing movement of a patient should be near the apex, but this patient used the denture with very low vertical height for more than 10 years with pushing out the mandible. Even with long deprogramming, the muscles may not be able to return to its original. So we need to fabricate the denture based on these tapping points and we need to make a decision. We can make a denture considering remounting of a denture later after the occlusion is changed, which needs to be explained to patients. Or we can fabricate a temporary denture and wait for the changes in the mandible. Usually the mandible moves backward a little bit. Only then we can fabricate another denture for that position. You need to decide which one to choose for each situation. A treatment denture can be used for senior patients when we are not sure where the stable point would be clinically. A treatment denture can be fabricated in a case where changes are expected. For example, a patient is chewing using a very anterior position. The effect of a treatment denture based on Dr. Watanabe's case report if it is used for about a month in a patient with very unstable tapping, 
it is known that the chewing position would become consistent with the position that we are lightly guiding. Professor, no? Actually, we have many questions coming up on the chat. Is it okay if we have interim Q&A session? Yes, let's have a look at them. Sherlock asked the question. I'm a fan of Dr. No Guante. Thank you. And Nang Nang Pyeonchi. Professor Cho and Professor No, hello. And any 0275 complete denture is always interesting. And thank you for the lecture in advance. And then a man asked the question. Impacted tooth and alveoloplasty. Is there a case where alveoloplasty is not recognized? I don't understand the question. Another question from him. Can alveoloplasty be recognized more often for complicated extraction? This is not related to complete dentures. Impacted tooth and alveoloplasty, are they recognized? What do you, what do you think? I don't quite understand the question. I believe this is off the topic, centric relation. So we will carefully look at the question later and try to understand the question. Maybe this is insurance coverage recognized by the insurance company. said the name of the product for deprogramming, is it? Keplock, where can I buy it? You don't have to use the product. When I studied abroad, I came to know the product. Maybe it was from GC. Do you think we can find the manufacturer on the internet? Yeah, it was, maybe it was GC. And we need to check. In Korea, I have not seen anywhere it is sold. Rather than that product, Cotton rolls can work. Some elastic materials, right? Yes, rubber-like material. They can be bit with maxilla. If left and right are separate, on one side it can fall off, so both sides are connected. Most often, it would be cotton rolls on both sides, right? Yes. Administrator. This is a question that came to YouTube. How long do you need to use the deep programming denture on average? I believe this is about the treatment denture, the treatment time. The mandible chewing muscles can be deprogrammed very quickly and after a one week use uh, you can achieve some changes and after one month of use in many cases you can achieve stability it is not supposed to be used for more than three months it has the role of correcting the wrong occlusion and it has an unstable element because it is flat and you don't know where the chewing will occur so if it is used for more than three months, the EMG measurements would show unstable results according to papers. So it is recommended to be used for less than three months. The effect begins to show in a week, and one month is good enough, so it should not be used for more than three months. Next question. If you take maxilla impression taking with a light body and a heavy body, and why do you use aginate impression taking for the mandible? This is not the subject that we are talking about today. Did you talk about light body and a heavy body for impression taking in your lecture? I don't think so. Maybe this is about some photos I've shown. I also use alginate impression and silicone impression for maxilla as well. So they are used for both maxilla and mandible. Okay, that is understood. Ippun Hano, Professor Nogwante, my support to you is male occlusion genetic 
this is not something we need to talk about, but maybe it is related, genetically related. The male occlusion I'm talking about is class 2 and class 3. They have some genetic element, but unstable joint is uh, something acquired. The skeletal form can be genetic. Someone named Light asked the question. In a full mouth complete denture patient, when a patient is chewing on one side, either the right or the left side, the other side denture is lifted and gets lost. Retention and stability of the denture was okay, but if a large particle food is chewed on one side, the other side is lifted. Maybe it is due to the errors in the occlusion or vertical dimension. Taking, how can I resolve the problem? This is about balanced occlusion. There are various factors involved not to make one side of the denture be lifted up. A denture base should be wide enough, or a denture with a properly positioned artificial teeth can collapse. So to a certain degree, the denture base should be expanded. Also, when artificial teeth are positioned too outwardly, the opposite side can be lifted up when chewing. Also, when alveolar ridge is severely resorbed, this happens more in the maxilla than mandible. If maxillary anterior has flabby gum or if mandible has a tendency of class 3, and the anterior region which is very small, the number 5 premolar is positioned very much outwardly from the ridge where this kind of problem can occur, then number 4 and 5, the space can be narrowed. And I also believe it is due to the lack of posterior palatal seal is one of the reasons that maxillary denture falls off. So you need to check that. So based on the proper retention and stability impressions were taken properly. After that, occlusion should be checked and then post sealing should be checked as well. Guaratik is the name who asked the question. After prosthetic occlusal adjustment and crown mounting, if the bite is low, do we need to take the bite with the crown on? This is a crown bridge problem. The bite is not taken. It sounds like it is it okay to take a bite after mounting the low bite crown. Well, how do you think it is handled in a lab? Yes, it can be handled, but you need to communicate with the lab properly. That will not be a problem. To obtain occlusion with wax frame, if mandible is protruding continuously, is there a way to control it? It sounds like it's about people with prognathic chewing. If you look at, in general, how the wax frames are fabricated, they are, in many cases, fabricated in straight line up to the retromolar pad. Early contact in that area make mandible protruded often. To obtain occlusion with wax frame, I don't like to use wax frame at number 7, which is a big factor. If you use wax frame at number 7, it often pushes the mandible. So use the wax frame up to number 6, and it is better to reduce the occlusal area. Next question. I used the Gothic arch tracing in the past. It was difficult to stably produce a tracing marking. Do you have any know-how? This is a very good question. As I do it, I have established the sequence. After tapping, I let the patient do back and forth movements. If a patient cannot do back and forth movements, I let him or her do movements in all directions and uh, I take time to relax muscles. After back and forth movements, left and right movements under tapping in the posterior, followed by tapping and the back and forth movements again. 
and the tapping point marker would be recorded. Is that the question? Sometimes stability cannot be achieved. When stability is not achieved, when we do tracing, error points can be made. But uh, I didn't explain it in this lecture today due to constraint of time. So if you take time to relax muscles with exercise, it works better. So it requires exercise. Yes, when I let patients to do the movements, and um, in the meanwhile, I see other patients, and I can see the tracing works very well. So I would appreciate it if you take another opportunity to explain the know-how or tips to make a gothic arch tracing marking appear very well. Next, Gamzik. Under molar occlusion, the amount of muscle force transmission in terms of the percentage of teeth occlusal surface. This one, molar occlusion, the amount of muscle force transmitted in terms of the percentage of teeth occlusal surface. The amount of muscle force transmission, the percentage of teeth occlusal surface. So when molars are in occlusion, isn't muscle force applied to the entire teeth occlusal surface? We don't quite understand the question. We need to check it later. Next, Dan Kim. If the tapping point is different from CR, what happens? Actually, the definition of the word CR involves condyle and condyle discs. CR here, I would prefer to use the words condyle stability over CR. Ultimately, TMJ is not the position to discuss about CR. Usually, the position where condyle is stable in an edentulous patient coincides with a tapping point. The tapping point and the position that we are lightly guiding would be the apex or a little bit anterior to the apex. If the positions do not coincide, it is a situation where occlusion, the current one, is unstable. In the last patient we saw, the position we guided is different from the patient's fast touching position by about 4 millimeters. In such patients, it is a little bit hard to, to determine the position, so the tapping point would be stored now, but we need to consider the possibility of remounting after the mandible is moved a little bit backward. More definite approach is to use the treatment denture. Which one is more reliable? When the difference is huge and some patients cannot chew with the position we guided, we have to use the tapping point if we have to fabricate the denture immediately. If we have time, we can use a treatment denture to make backward movement. We cannot always afford to fabricate two dentures. In such cases, I do not use the anatomic teeth, but use the lingualized occlusion with a little bit of freedom. That makes occlusal adjustment a little bit easy. I understand. Another question from Dan Allman. If bilateral molars in the upper and lower jaws have crowns, if occlusal force is strong or teeth grinding happens often, what is the efficient treatment? This is off the topic. What would be a good treatment for this case with the teeth grinding? Maybe you need to do the occlusal adjustment. So next time we will look into this because it is not the topic of today.
Gamzi to prevent low implant occlusion, what do you need to do? Maybe the question should be brought up next time when we talk about implants. Another question, in order to secure deprogramming, what is the maximum time that is allowed? Deprogramming on the day can be done using cotton rolls. It is to exclude the occlusal contact of existing denture. The deprogramming can work on the chewing muscle pretty fast, but if the denture was used for more than 10 years or TMJ was changed, it is not easy to erase the habit on the day. With the treatment denture, you take time to go through the changes. As I said before, it can be used from one week to about one month and no more than three months. Okay, understood? Actually, you have still more to cover in the lecture and interim Q&A session is concluded here and uh, I'd like to thank Professor No for the answers. And I'd like to thank the viewers who have posted the questions and the support for us. Please keep asking questions and we will do the lucky draw and send you the coffee coupon. Please go ahead, continue with your lecture. We'll look at some clinical cases. In this patient, treatment denture was effective and we did the tracing again, and the patient had hardly any breach, and the tapping with the deprogramming on the day, the memory persisted. In this patient also, the flat table was used together with the tissue conditioning. They are usually used together, otherwise occlusal contact would be changed and early contact can happen which makes patients to remove the denture immediately. They need to be adjusted to be used without pain. After it's used for one month, the tracing was done again and the tapping is moved backward considerably. It's not always positioned at the apex, it depends on patients. This is the previous patient with the severe jaw displacement to the left and, and TMJ is not completely restored to a normal state but with the relaxation of muscle, condyle position is changed. A case, the patient had a severe ridge resorption and the patient used the improper denture before so had a forward biting habit. So if you look at this patient, the ridge resorption is severe and impression was taken and the tapping was um, in the anterior region. In this patient, even after achieving the occlusal stability, if you fabricate a denture all at once, actually if you take um, tissue condition impression, it can reduce the internal pain quite considerably. So this is performed with uh, two purposes. There are two purposes of using treatment denture in this patient. First, stable occlusion. Next, checking chewing position and painless status is used for tissue conditioning to reproduce the inside. Thus, the upper posterior is touching only the palate and only overjet is given to the upper anterior, not overbite which will change the mandible confining the anterior region, leading to a situation hard to change, so only overjet. Next, in the mandible posterior region, the impression material temporary resin is very strong, so it will not wear down, posing difficulty in patients' repetitive chewing. If you mix baby powder a little bit under chewing, it will wear down. This is not today's topic, but tissue conditioner is adjusted so that in painless status, repetitive chewing position is found. The patient's slight forward chewing position is improved, and after about a month, the occlusal surface is worn down, and you can see the position where the patient is chewing repeatedly. 
so it has some retentive force, hardly with any reach. For patients with a severely reserved reach, lingualized occlusion is provided. It has been four years and the patient still uses the denture pretty well. This is a similar patient to previous cases. And if you observe x-ray and face, the existing denture shows a considerable displacement to the left of the mandible. Usually, the upper left posterior should be in the outward border like this, but it is way outside the border. The left TMJ is noticeably smaller than the right. Against the entire face, the mandible is very much displaced to the left. With this condition, this patient can chew to a certain degree, but with a little bit of relaxation and guidance, uh, the jaw is moved to the right, and we can expect more stability of the patient's jaw with the current chewing position coinciding with the deprogrammed position. By providing tissue conditioning, a denture can be fabricated for this patient. On the day of treatment denture delivery, on the day the midline, is right on spot. The patient is currently using the existing denture. You can notice that the entire mandible is displaced to the left a little bit. And with the passage of one month of time, the mandible is changed quite a bit. At the early stage, the patient was recalled every two to three days for about a week. And then every two weeks, you can see the change of the middle line of the mandible. It is moved to the right by about two to three millimeters, changing the balance of the entire face. We cannot achieve this result from all patients, but when condyle position is a little bit unstable or the condyle is a little bit dislocated, this kind of approach can be used as the patient in this case. The last patient, the left joint is a little bit dislocated compared to the right joint. This is similar to the patient with displaced face before. The patient's gothic arch tracing is very unique. The tapping point is about one centimeter anterior to the apex. He is chewing at that position repeatedly. The tapping is not scattered next with a gothic arch mounted. An articulating paper is applied. We can guide to the position of light guiding in a comfortable way. And the position is slightly to the left of the tapping point. It is the position where repeatedly the marking is made, but that position is not appropriate. The, it is far from the apex. If you look at the patient's CT, the patient is abiding on the tapping point where the joint is dislocated. The joint posteriorly enters when gothic arch tracing is performed but the patient's muscle is not adapted to that status. For this patient, the occlusion cannot be established on the first day. A treatment denture would be fabricated using the repetitive position used by the patient, and we need to observe whether chewing is properly performed. So the patient used the treatment denture for about two months. If you look at the tapping position, with the gothic arch tracing, the position is a little bit changed, one to two millimeters. The patient's biting position on day one of treatment denture compared to two months later. And the images are superimposed to see how much mandible is changed. Against the maxilla, the whitish portion on the right-hand side is the portion changed in the mandible and the dislocated joint became a little bit better positioned with widened 
TMJ space. Even though TMJ is not perfectly corrected, the patient established a stable position and I've observed the patient for about three years and the tapping point is not changed and repeatedly the midline is not changed and the chewing is performed pretty well in this position. So sometimes it is hard to find the textbook-like TMJ position in senior patients and their lateral movements on an articulator is not matching with the intraoral movements because an articulator is a machine to reproduce normal lateral movements of a patient. It is hard to control patients so we do not know where the lateral movements would go. Rather than completely solving bilateral occlusion with that machine, we need to establish less than perfect occlusion and uh, it should be adjusted intraorally to match the balance. Intraoral adjustment is necessary for patients with the tapping point not reaching the apex and who have abnormal movements. We need to prepare for that and to make it easy, I use the lingualized occlusion quite a lot. I did not want to show you very easy cases, so I collected some unique patients which make up less than 5% of all cases. And I talked about how to address the problems. So that's important. Thank you very much for the good lecture. Since we had the Q&A session before, we received a lot of more questions and uh, let's look at the chat. So if you go up a little bit more, greeny87, it is a problem when a patient is biting differently for each by taking. How do you deal with the problem? Do you make the patient practice to do the biting? before taking the bite. A shortcut. If you use wax frame, as I showed you before, it should be not too thick. If it is thick, the patient would feel foreign object. The myoneural system would be adapted in a wrong way, so the occlusal area should be reduced, and the patient should be instructed to close and open the mouth immediately, and the wax frame should be cooled in cold water and the tapping would be confirmed one more time. Next question, what is the sequence of gothic arch tracing? I talked about the sequence already. Okay, next question. To try and complete denture wax ring, bite was taken with the silicone, but should be checked for early contact. I thought silicone bite taking is more accurate. I think this is because you mentioned the paraffin wax before. Silicon bite can be taken as long as wax frame is not in contact. To prevent wax frame from coming into contact, the patient should maintain the situation himself while closing the mouth. So as I said before, you can use the thumb and the index finger to provide a stop in the anterior region during the time for hardening and this requires a little bit of technique so I prefer to use wax. If you use silicone, a patient can tightly close the mouth distorting the denture base. Next, the red cherry one. For open or deep bite, in the process of increasing or decreasing the occlusal height, what is the limit a patient can adjust to? For open or deep bite, in the process of increasing or decreasing the occlusal height, what is the limit a patient can adjust to? I believe a patient can adjust to vertical dimension changes. Uh, personally, I believe it is uh, 2 to 3 millimeters, as long as it is within the stable vertical dimension range. It will not pose a great problem clinically. Is deep bite more favorable for a denture? Deep bite? I don't deliberately provide deep bite. Right, right. A deep bite is for prognathism, so it would not really work. Next question.
NEO275, is it okay not to use a clear material for trial denture base in your photo? Opaque resin is used, and can you adjust the thickness? If possible, the border should be filled to show the retention, and a denture base should not be too thick. As where the wax rim is mounted, it will have artificial teeth arranged. But I'm not sure about the clear material. A clear acryl resin, any resin with less shrinkage will work. If you don't use a clear material, we will not be able to tell the thickness. Maybe that's the question. The overall exterior of a denture should not be too thick, otherwise it would interfere with the positions of tongue or cheek. When you are using a clear resin, you also need to pay attention to the thickness, and clear material would show the thickness. Even with opaque resin, I believe you can adjust the thickness. Next, from Shin Drum, if CO is different from CR, isn't it better to take a bite based on the existing CO? It can be okay if the existing denture has been stable for a long time, but in many cases we change the vertical dimension. In the end, we need to find the position where the patient can bite comfortably. If a patient's denture has appropriate vertical dimension and proper occlusion, the patient can chew pretty well bilaterally and the, the muscles can change a little bit to comfortable position. And the tapping point is too far from it. As you begin to use the muscle, the jaw can change a little bit if the patient is chewing in the too forward position, for example, so it depends. Next question from Idina. For unilateral complete denture, a preliminary impression is taken with alginate for the antagonist often. Even though it is put into a moisture box immediately, compared to rubber, it may be deformed a little bit, which can lead to a big error when occlusal registration material is positioned later. I did an alginate impression experiment. The errors can be within 100 micron from silicon impressions. When an alginate impression is removed, it is removed from the tray with the holes because of the undercut. If you apply alginate at the back of the tray, the deformation is small. Both silicon and alginate impressions are within 100 micron error range. They are immediately put into a moisture box. Yes, even so, errors may occur, right? That may be the question. But I think more deformation is occurring at the beginning when it is removed. When the registration material is removed, it will not be affected that much. Is that what you are saying? So if it is put into the moisture box, the alginate impression will not pose a big problem. Let's go to the next question. This may not be related to the topic of today. Recently, I delivered an upper complete denture. At the three-month follow-up on the mandible full arch implants, a crack was found near the symphysis and what would be the causes of that it was repaired but was the crack caused by occlusion usually the upper artificial teeth are arranged more buckly than the alveolar ridge. thus it is better if occlusion is established more inside when occlusal force is strong or implants are in the mandible only upper palatal cusps need to be in contact the upper denture applies force to the symphysis by slightly diverging the upper denture. In such patients, only upper lingual cusps need to go to the lower fossa. While guiding, only number 3, 4, and 5 need to be in contact to lower the force in the symphysis and stronger resin should be used. Occlusion is a big part of it and we need to consider providing a relief at the center. Next question from Good Evening. 
due to accident or tumor surgery if normal conduct and foster relationship is not found in panorama what is your know-how to find the CR or physiological rest position if there is no conduct due to tumor surgery there be no CR obtainment in a textbook manner in that condition, condyle rest position with muscle relaxation should be found. As I said before, you need to undergo trial and error. Let's go to the next question that came through YouTube. Follow-up checks are done every two to three day intervals. But if a patient is recalled every week, what is your prescription? To be covered by the national insurance i'm not sure if it is about the final denture i don't check the final denture every two to three days i check it on the day and a couple of weeks later the next question came through the administrator question a complete denture is being provided to a patient with class 3 when he had teeth but even after using Gothic arch, it is still severe class 3. How should I set up the teeth for such patients? Actually, I have not treated a patient with class 3 in the anterior region. I can talk a lot about class 3 patients. The key points of vertical dimension should be slightly higher within the allowed range and the upper border should be a little bit thicker. The upper teeth should be positioned a little bit anteriorly and the posterior region should not have crossbite. There are reasons for that, but those are the important things. This question looks the same as before. Next question from Pochol Ruhapangnip. You use the posterior zero degree cusp teeth. Lateral interference was removed and lost CR was found. A stable TMJ condyle was recovered to find stable CR. Based on that, a new denture is fabricated to make more stable denture. This is a remarkable new concept that I learned in this hour. But I'm thinking, how can I explain this process to the patients? I think there is some misunderstanding here. I don't use zero degree cusp teeth. People think it is used to chew at any position when lower denture is not stable. But we know in TMJ there is condylar angles and Christensen phenomenon. Therefore, Bilateral balanced occlusion is really hard to achieve in many cases, so I use the lingualized occlusion for those with some gap. The concept of the flat table that I explained is a little bit different from the zero degree cusp tip. The concept was to make only the upper palate cusps are in contact with the flat table. We are talking about patients with unstable TMJ, so we need to go through trial and error. With aging, the joint is weakened and disc is changed, so we need to go through some adaptation, which I explain to patients. Next question. It is addressed to me, but I would like to invite Dr. No to join me. What is the best suggestion to an edentulous patient who is complaining the discomfort of a denture? Do you have your own solution for that? Dentures are not comfortable intrinsically and how can we explain that to a patient? I ask patients cooperation to make it more comfortable and our staff is encouraging them. It is important and I usually talk about this story to the patients. Someone with two normal legs can run 100 meters and that is different from someone who is running with a prosthetic leg. Of course, the one with a prosthetic leg cannot run as fast. It is an analogy between the original teeth and the denture. The denture is a prosthetic teeth which are made artificially. Prosthetic devices are bound to be uncomfortable. That's how I explain it to patients. If we believe the denture is well fabricated, the patient should try to adapt to it. But if we find something that needs to be improved, we need to fabricate the denture again. Next question from Ilpyeon. 
There are cases with multiple midline fractures, especially with upper full denture cases. What do we need to check and what is the solution? As I said before, with wearing the upper buckle cusps are in too much contact and upper posterior contact is not proper. I also believe a patient's occlusal force plays an important role. If a patient has strong occlusal force, fractures can repeatedly happen. So the patients need to be cooperative in terms of controlling the occlusal force by avoiding hard food. Even a metal base is fractured, so we need to get the cooperation from the patients. The last comment here is appreciating Professor Nogantes wonderful lecture. This concludes the lecture. I would like to express my gratitude to all those who joined our chat. Now it's time to ask our Professor No to select the best question of today. Uh, there are so many questions from so many people, very good questions, and I would like to thank them. And uh, there are many good questions. I would like to choose as the best questioner the ID Bojolkiwa Kwangnip for many good questions. Congratulations to the best questioner with the ID of Bojolkiwa Kwangnip who will be contacted individually later and those who won coupons will receive text messages on Tuesday altogether. Professor No, would you like to give us a word of encouragement to those dentists who are studying prosthodontics late into the night? Yes, I would like to thank you for your participation at Friday night. Complete denture is a bit challenging, but we cannot afford not to do it. It is related to overdentures and implant treatment for senior patients. I hope my lecture based on my experience is helpful for those participants. Thank you very much for coming to Prosthodontics on Friday, Professor No. How was the seminar tonight with Professor No? and this prosthodontics on Friday. I hope you gained a very good tip on establishing CR with complete dentures. For unanswered questions, answers will be provided in the comment section. In the next prosthodontics on Friday, Professor Park Sang-won of Jeonnam University Dental School will talk about is bilaterally balanced occlusion good for complete dentures? Thank you very much. I thank you.